What's up everybody? It's your boy Busy Blue and I am back again with another This Is Us Season 2 recap and premiere. I mean and review. Today I'm going to be recapping episode 4. It was really, 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 really good. It hit on some really tough um, social issues. So let's get into it. Before we get what before we get into it. Make sure you subscribe, subscribe, subscribe if you like what you see after this video. I promise you I'm engaging. So come and join this journey with us. We call ourselves the Busy Bees. So join those Busy Bees and click that bell to get a part of the notification squad. I'm telling you, we have so much fun here. Um, so join on in. Now, let's get into it. So we have Jack and Rebecca. Um, they have all of the kids there and all of the kids have chicken pox. Y'all remember when I had chicken pox, I was in the second grade. And I remember I got them because my mom wanted me to get them from every with everybody else. And apparently Randall <laughs> heard the same thing too. Because Randall went up there he was like, look, I'm ready. they exposed, okay? As Jocelyn Hernandez would say, he was exposed. Came out, closed off, was like, okay, what I got to do? Okay, who going to rub up on me? Who got to touch? <laughs> Um, and Rebecca told him to get back in. That's when the mom comes in. Um, knocking at the door. She's, she, oh, what's happening? What's going on in here? Here, you know, I'm so, uh, I, I'm, clear, I'm clearly, you guys needed my help. I'm glad I'm here. You could tell even from the beginning that she's kind of an overbearing mother. It didn't, it didn't come off as strong as they were making a scene because you can tell that there was tension when she came into the door. Jack is like, why she here? And even Rebecca's like, why she even here? But and they come up as strong um, in the beginning. But you can tell that she's definitely an unbearing mother. She tells Jack to go out there and go get the groceries and make sure you sort the ground too a little bit because it's snowing outside and we want to make sure that I don't fall, slip and fall. Okay, break my neck. He does all of that stuff and then he goes into the kitchen. And he's like, yo, why is she here? And she's like, look, I don't know. Um. You know, I don't have time for her to be here. I don't want to have to deal with her complaining. Are we going to be able to get through this? And she's like, you know, I hate when she calls me Bunny. You know, all stuff. I wonder why she calls her Bunny. I saw several people talking about it on Twitter about how the mama protects her. So I don't, I was, I didn't understand it. But if y'all if y'all can understand why she calls her Bunny, y'all let me know. From there, we go into the living room and we see the grandma giving out gifts, right? So she gives Rando a basketball. You know, telling him that he needs to, you know, really work in the sports. Now, y'all know Randall. Don't play no damn basketball. He ain't never played basketball. ain't going to play basketball. But he got him playing basketball, right? She got my basketball. So, um, then she gets Jack a football helmet and gets um Kate a dress. And Kate picks it up. She's like, oh, my God, I'm not going to be able to fit into it. She was on where it could be. It could be a gold dress. Grandma, come here. Let me speak to you first. Grandma, come here. Come here, come here, girl. Stop it right now. Get out the house. Stop it right now. Get out the house. Go. Bad girl, get out the house. And it was just like, is she serious? I just felt so offended for everybody who was in the room, everybody who had to deal with her, everything that she was saying. I just really felt some type of way. Um, we move on from there. Um, we, um, uh, more from there, Kevin, he's like in the bed, he's just itching, he's a little boy, he's still itching, 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 Jack comes in, and Kevin's like, oh my god, it itches, I can't deal with these, scratching, I actually still have a couple of marks from some of my, um, um, chicken pots, so I definitely know how it is, I can vividly remember being in my grandma's kitchen, and my mom was like, pouring some type of ointment all over me and my grandma was like telling her what to do and then my grandma like put me in the oatmeal but I can vividly remember this like it was yesterday it's amazing what stuff we remember right anyway we go from there and Jack was saying like look this sucks and I know it sucks but it's you're itching more because you're focused on the pain you know what I'm saying when you're not thinking about pain you don't have to deal with the pain this comes in later in the episode and I'm gonna tie it all together for y'all um, but y'all know how I do with the past and the present. I want to separate them. But basically, he's like, look, you can't deal with the pace. So what you need to do is come out here and battle cry. So he gets out. Um, he pulls Jack out of the bed. He's like, look. Arr! He starts yelling. And, 
Oh, this girl. Oh. You know, it's not like that, but y'all get what I'm doing. <laughs> I've never been the manliest man. Um, and Jack's like, what you doing? He was like, look, you need to do this so that you won't have to think about the itch. Um, get over it. You're a strong man. You don't have to worry about the itch. So they both start screaming at each other. Then here come grandma. Oh, no, sweetie, don't do that. You know, just I have a headache. It's hard out here, and I need to make sure that I don't have this headache. So please don't. Please don't do that. And don't scratch your face, Jack, because you're going to be able to use that one day. And that's when he's like, oh, really? You think so? Y'all, hold on. My dog is chewing on this thing. You have to get that back after the, um... Hey, y'all know I don't edit stuff. This is live on the scene. So, um, now we're going from there. We see, um, Kate and Randall, they running around the house. Randall really wants the chicken box. And he's running around like, look, you give me the chicken box. I want to get it. I want to get it. Come and give it to me. Um, and she's like, no, Randall, you need to go upstairs and finish your project. Um, so he goes up to the grandma. He's trying to tell him about the project. I mean, everybody had to do this project. You know, when the, the marble hits the ball because it goes on the slide and the slide. The, I don't know how it, how it's really pronounced. And I didn't, I didn't even look it up. But you know what I'm talking about. And he tells the grandma, she's like, um, I mean, shouldn't he be playing basketball? I noticed what she really wanted to say. But it was just like, um, okay, well, good for you. Anyway, so then she starts talking to Rebecca. Rebecca, you know, she making dinner, whipping it in the kitchen. Mm, mm, mm. You know, making dinner for the um kids. And, you know, she's asking her, have you put the garnish in it? Did you put a little bit of the oregano? Did you put a little bit of um, cayenne pepper? Did you put the, the garlic powder? Like, did you put everything that we need in the soup? And Rebecca's like, look, do you want to make the soup? Now, I know normally that's a rhetorical question. But the grandma was like, you know what? Sure will. Going in, Katie's like, well, mommy, I like your soup the best. Grandma's like, well, that's because you already have mine, first of all. And you know who taught her how to make that soup? I taught her. You know, and it was passed down from generations to generations. But you know that generation stopped. Because we learned it from a lovely black woman who was Kate's nanny or maid. Mommy, you had a maid? Yes, she did. It was a lovely black woman named Nora. I know Nora somewhere turned to her grave, but she's not alive right now. Why she even had to bring a race in the first place? This is this is when you first, when I first, I mean, the basketball, clearly, I was like, okay, maybe she, there's a disconnect. But when she said it was a lovely black woman named Nora, and then she had the nerve to also say, you know, I had to keep correcting her English because I didn't want them talking about that street talk. That's when I knew, okay, the grandma got to go. The grandma has to go. Clearly, there's some racial tension there or some type of biasism or that she's just not with it because she's she stereotyping the hell out of all the kids. You know, you put on this dress or this could be your gold dress. You play the football, you're going to look good and then you play the basketball. I just wasn't with it. So... After that, Rebecca and the grandma goes into the kitchen. I mean, they're in the living room. And Rebecca's like, look. Sorry, y'all. My puppy does not like being in the cage. And he will do whatever he needs. He's a Boston Terrier Chihuahua mix. And he got the worst part of Chihuahua. Because all he do is whine. Which is crazy because I'm a full Chihuahua. Who says nothing at all? Anyway. She stressed out. and was like, look. She, you can, you know how you can tell you getting on somebody's nerves? She's getting on her nerves and she's not understanding it. She's telling her, like, look, um, the, when she's coming in, the grandma's up with something. Uh, who would have thought that Randall was the one to get into private school? And Rebecca's like, well, what are you trying to say? And she's like, oh, nothing. And then that's when Rebecca's like, look, I'm done with you. Let me tell you something. You know what I'm saying? You want to know why we don't come to your house for Christmas, for Thanksgiving, for Easter? Because you criticize everything that goes on in this house. You criticize how I cook, how I clean, how I how my husband provides, everything that goes on. We don't want to be having to put up with that mess. Okay, no, we're not here no more, ma'am. And we don't have to have to deal with that. And you know, Randall tries his best to make you like him. And the only thing you do is, you know, discourage him. Push him down and throw basketballs in his hand. And it's because he's black. That's why you do all that stuff because he's black. 
And the grandma's taking a bet. And she's like, he doesn't like basketball. Y'all remember on um, Real Housewives of Atlanta? It was when um, Nene and Kim were arguing and Kim didn't want to come to a specific um, event, right? And she was like, I just didn't want to go to the barbecue and eat fried chicken and such and such with y'all. And Nene was like, we didn't have fried chicken. And Kim was like, excuse me? We didn't have fried You said you didn't want to come to the barbecue and have fried chicken. We didn't have fried chicken. We had lamb. Okay, that's what we ate at the barbecue. Fried chicken, lamb. No, you stereotyped us. That's not what we had. And that's what he's saying. He doesn't like basketball. If anything, he likes football. You know, and then the mom told something, you being hysterical. Let me tell you what, what we not being hysterical. And Rebecca went through all of the stuff that the mom has done that she need to really look and take a close look at. And she told her to end like, girl, you racist. You are racist. Okay? When the snow is gone, I need you to be gone too. And I'm thinking to myself, we, do we have to wait for the snow? Because I'm tired of her already. But she said, when the snow is gone, I need you gone too. Because you're a racist. And then she turns around. And there is um, Randall right there. Talking about something, I got a chicken pop. He done heard the whole thing. Um, from there, you see Randall, Jack, and Rebecca. They're basically upstairs. Um, he, she, he's like, yo, what grandma? Randall's like, yo, grandma's never said mean things to me like that. I don't understand how she can be racist. And um, Jack brings up, you know, what I told you about Martin Luther King. Um, and he's like, oh my God, yeah, Martin Luther King was trying to get rights for black people. Um, and they shot him because of the... <gasps> Did grandma shoot him? Like she was so, and I'm thinking to myself, Rando, come here, boy, so I can slip. <laughs> you know these are no more Luther King. Um, but they they basically talked to him about racial undertones. Um, and the fact that you don't have to overtly say something for us to understand what you mean or how why you mean um what you say or what the meaning behind it or push or the force behind it. Um, people don't have to be overtly racist now. Um, sometimes it's what you say and how you say it. And so you have to double think those things. Um, so from there you see Jack Kevin. They're all in the bed. Jack wake up because now he has, he's gotten sick. Um, Jack thought he had the chicken pox before, but clearly he didn't. So now it's um, something bigger. I think it's called a measles. I'm not, I'm not sure. Don't quote me. Put it in the comments if y'all remember. Um, so they're all laying in bed. And Rebecca comes in, she's just looking at them like, oh, let me go downstairs and get you something, Jack. Anybody else wants something? Everybody else wanted something. And Jack was like, wait, 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 hold on. Nobody is going downstairs because of this lady? And they're all like, yeah. So then he's like, look, we're not going to be held hostage in our own home. Jack went out there, he put his coat on, and he shoveled that lady out. He's like, look, she about to go. Okay, I'm not going to say, I mean, I know I'm sick, I'm ill. Jack is a man, he's a good man. Well, he was. I'm sick, I'm ill, but y'all not gonna have me up in here stuck hostage, so he did her out. Rebecca comes in to see her mom, and she's like, look, um, just want to let you know that Jack done shoved another thing, and I told you about the snow, lady, here's your bags. And basically, her mother is like, look, I want you to know that I grew up at a different time. These things are just different for me, but my people are, were different um and i don't know if it's race i don't know if it's adoption i don't know what it is it just doesn't feel right and i'm trying to overcome those things and this was um an interesting part of the conversation to watch because rebecca was like well you shouldn't have to try but she should and hear me out because i know I, I could get some negative comments I, I think that she's lived life a certain type of way that she has to overcome those stereotypical ideals that she has in her mind. And it's not going to happen overnight. And it sucks. Because you just over... You, you, innately, you would think people want to do well for people. But once you've been ingrained to think a certain way, and she's elderly. Okay? Um, it may come up different. And I think what was great in the fact that she can acknowledge that, look, I know what I'm doing sometimes doesn't come off the best way. But I'm trying my best. Um, so even though Rebecca was looking at her like you shouldn't try, I was actually happy that she said she was, because that's important. Um, after that, the grandma goes upstairs because she's about to say goodbye to everyone. She sees Randall. She's like, hey, I just want to say goodbye. And Randall like, deuces. And the grandma, she tries again. She's like, oh my God, is this the machine that you built? And he's like, yeah, I was able to switch the balls, you know, laws of physics and stuff like that. And... 
the grandma finally understood, like, this is what's important to you. And I'm, I've been pushing this ball in your hand. You one of these balls, you know? Um, and it was just touching because she's like, you know, you are a very special young man, aren't you? And he told us, so, took you long enough. I knew I was special the whole time. Where you be? Okay, we've been trying to tell you. Um, so that was a good episode. I wonder how much the grandma's going to come back in. Because you can tell that she wants to be different. She wants to try. She wants to do something different. Um, I didn't like her in the episode. They humanized her a little bit at the end. But still, she was mean. What y'all think? Alright, so we have Kate. Basically, she's working out. She's getting ready for the bar mitzvah. She wants to be able to fit in this dress. Um, Toby is watching her working out. He's telling her, like, look, it's okay. You don't have to worry. You're going to be good. And she's very persistent in making sure that she works out. Um, and that she looks good for this bar mitzvah. Yo, don't be trying to, you know, come in between me and my workout. I need this. Um, so, um... Kevin gets into an accident at one point in time, and then, um, cause, uh, from his last knee, so her and Toby go over there, after Kevin's like, look, he's okay, she's like, look, I'm about to go to my, um, my class, you'll be able to watch him, and he's like, watch him, what you mean watch him, like, you can't be going to the class, we just got here, this and that, she's like, no, I need to go to my class, I'm going to yoga, leave me alone, so basically she leaves, she didn't go to the yoga, at least it didn't look like she did, she could have, she actually went to the pharmacy, um, and she went to go get weight loss pills. She went to the hour. I was like, oh, my God, is she trying to cheat the system? It's just like she's going to um, the weight loss surgery. She's going to talk to people. She's going to fat camp. Now she's trying to trick her with weight loss pills. I just felt really bad. All to try to get into this dress. And you remember her grandma told her this can be the gold dress. It was like all of these things is making it seem like she's just always going to have this complex of trying to be thin, trying to fit into something, or trying to be something that she's not. And it just didn't, I didn't like it. From there, you see her, she goes home, and she's able to try to dress, and she fits in it. And it's just like, girl, the weight loss pills don't work. And it's just, it was, it was hard to watch. But, um, she's really not talking to Toby. I think it's because, you know, she was taking the pills. She was really, um, trying to be quiet about it. I think it's because it's something that she's really not trying to talk about. We see her at the doctor. The doctor's telling her, okay, she, you know, she's telling the doctor, I'm really nervous, you know, about my weight, my age, my healthiness. I want to make sure that I'm where I'm supposed to be. Y'all, she pregnant. I was like, oh my gosh. I was really, really excited for Kate. I don't think she's prepared for a child. That's just me. Now, I love Kate to death, but I feel like with her emotional instability, she's definitely not ready for a child. And something's going to have to get. I don't know where we're going to go. We'll see. What y'all think? Y'all think Kate ready for a child? Why y'all think Toby's gonna take it? Uh, it's a lot, cause he's a jokester, he's a kidder, he probably wants to live in a moment. I don't know, y'all put that out in the comments. I'm really nervous. Now we have Randall. Randall is trying to take all of the girls out for bowling. When they get to the bowling alley, he's like, look, let's get ready, let me go and see if we can go get some shoes. Deja, you know, the new adopted one, she's talking about she don't want to take off her shoes and give them off to anybody else. Um, and I can understand the fear, you know, maybe she's, it's been stolen before, it's, she, doesn't, it, she doesn't want that to trigger her. Um, he's like, no, it's okay, maybe I'll ask him if you just bowl in your socks. And she basically was like, I don't want to bowl in my socks either, like you're um, playing. At some point, some girl was like, look, maybe uh, her socks or her feet are nasty to her hair. Then NBC streaming services stopped. I don't know if she pushed the girl, she punched the girl. I was looking on live. People said WWE, World Star Hip Hop Fight. I was so upset. Then it comes back after the fight. Randall up in somebody's face. Assuming is the day. Y'all put in the comments what I missed. I was so angry. NBC, look into this. Why is CBS the only streaming service that got it right? I can watch CBS streaming services and they on point all the time, all day, every day. I ain't never got to worry. ABC don't have the streaming services here. And NBC was, it was just pausing in and out. Anyway, let me go on from there. He basically was in the, in the man face and was like, look, you get your daughter. 
Okay, don't be hitting my daughter. And the man was like, look, don't you get, you, you know, get a control of your daughter, Randall. Don't get, um, you know, get, have your daughter get in my face or be punching anybody of my children. You know, and Deja walks away because she's like, I'm not his daughter. From there, you see Beth and Randall there in bed. And he basically was looking at his decision like, oh, I can't believe that I did that. Why would I think that she likes bowling? Sit. Sit. Basically, Bobo's not a good decision. I can't believe that I did that. Um, I'm always making the worst decision. I really need you to go talk to her. And y'all know I love Beth. And Beth was like, you know what? For you, I will. So she goes to Deja the next day. Deja packing. Boom. Your arms are put in the bag. And she's like, well, where are you going? And she's like, oh, I know you want me a girl. Put the bag down. Let me sit to you. Let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to be grounded because we don't touch people in this house. But you all right. You ain't going nowhere. I grew up with... Y'all, is, is she be a Clark? Her name is Beth. Her maiden name is Beth Clark. I wonder if it's Bethany Clark or is it just Beth? What is it, y'all? Is it just Beth or is it Bethany? She like a Bethany. Anyway... She grew up with two sisters um, and an opinionated mother, two opinionated sisters, and they fought all the time. But what happened at the end of the day is they'll come together and they'll do their hair together because that's what bonded them. And I don't know what's going on with your hair, Deja. You know, your edges look like they need to little, be a little bit, you need new growth. Something's happening. It's looking a little, you know, out there. You know, have you combed it any me in it? Can I help you? Um, and she basically was like, look, if you need, I have a salon that I go to. I spend way too much money at that salon, but I love it. They always do my hair right, nice and tight. They give me full frontal lace wigs, you know, they, they keep a foreclosure. Baby hair is attached, you know what I'm saying? Do you want me to take you, this and that? And they just basically asked her, can you do my hair? Um, and Beth was like, yeah. So Beth goes to do her hair and as she's combing through, you just see patches and patches and patches and patches. Just hair was missing all over the place. And Beth basically gently asked, Thank you, how long has this been going on? How do you feel about that? Um, it, you know, my sister had alopecia. I understand how this goes and I still did her hair. How long has your hair been like this? Deja opens up and she's basically telling her like every time I'm stressed, it, it causes a flare up and my hair starts to fall out. And that has to be so hard for a child to take on that stress. And it's messing up so much of her mental and her physical, uh, you know, being that her hair is falling out. Um, whether she's acted out, something was going on around her, um, mother being put into jail, her moving from place to place, her hair was falling out from all of that stuff. So it's just really hard to see that. Um, and she's letting her know, like, look, everything's going to be okay. I'm going to, I know how to whip it up with the braids like the Haitians. I'm going to be able to do your hair so good and so tight. We're going to get all these patches back and cover it up. Um, so yeah, she actually does her hair really, really nice. Beth, um, after she's done doing her hair, she goes to Randall. They're making up the bed. She basically tells Randall everything that happened and says, like, she needs both of us. She needed to talk to me. And she needed to talk to you. Um, and Randall's such a good guy. He's like laughing and dancing with her. And she's like, look, we make a good team. And we have to do this together. We have to be in this thing together. Um, Randall then goes to Deja. was basically like, ooh, girl, you're looking good. Looking live. Okay, Alicia Keys teeth. She was looking like, more like Sierra on the, oh, what album was that? The Evolution, I think it wasn't The Evolution, because The Evolution, she was like this. Whatever album had, love and taste the magic, mm, everything ain't what it seems. Whatever that, that album was, that's where her hair was looking like. Sierra with those big old braids. She still looked good. Um, he came in and he basically apologized. Like, look, I did too much. I didn't mean to act like that for um, in front of you. And it just wasn't appropriate. And... One of the things that stresses me, when I get stressed out, because I had two big, big blow-ups this year, when I get stressed out, I like to run. And um, I know you get stressed out sometimes, and if you want to run with me, you know, feel free to do that. Deja, you know, pat her hair was like, huh? She told you what I said to her? Automatically, that trust foundation was broken there, and it was just like, damn. 
Uh, from there, you see they're getting ready for stuff in the morning. Deja in the um, mirror cutting her hair off. Cut it all off. All off. Okay, it was like set it off. Boom, boom. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. Come downstairs looking like who? I don't know. Okay? But uh, my mom would have been angry. <laughs> <laughs> what did y'all feel about that scene? I thought it was um, I thought everything that was going on through all of them is is really great. I think it's it's it, they're gonna have to take some real time to deal with Deja and everything that she has going on. Um, how do you think it's gonna happen? Um, as you can see, one of the little girls like, oh my god, I don't want to put somebody else's shoes on. Da, 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 after they just sat at the bowling alley, I just I'm still afraid this is gonna become a negative influence. Um, I don't know. She is a loose cannon and at any moment something can happen. And she has a lot of things that have happened to her and everything is triggering her. Um, what do y'all think? I, I, I still like everything about it. Um, I'm still nervous, but um, I'm invested. Tell me what y'all think. Put it down in the comments. Lastly, we got um, Kevin. Um, so Kevin's on the set. Um, Y'all know he had just had his knee injury the last um, in the last episode, and the director looked at his leg, and it just looked bad. It just looked bad. All this stuff going on, it's just bad. So basically, um, he was like, "Look, I'm not happy with it. You need to go see a doctor." Kevin goes sees the doctor. He says, "Like, look, he didn't want to do it because he wants to be able to get those scenes. He needs to get this as fast as possible." From there, he does surgery, post-surgery. You guys remember I was talking about Kate um, and um, Toby. They were helping him. Kate left. Um, then Toby's like, look, we need to take these painkillers with the food. Make sure that you're taking them. Um, at the same time, Kevin and Toby said, oh, no, we don't need those painkillers. I'm about to just take these bandages off, take the scraps off, and we about to rush through it. I think it's because... Flashback, you remember when he had the chicken pox and the itches and his dad was like, bro, you better run through the pain. Run through the pain. It's something that has now become, and he's become invested in it. He's like, look, I'm a champion. I get through this stuff. Okay, we're Pearsons. We don't play with this. Um, It just got really, it was hard to watch. From there, a guy comes to the house. He drops off an edible arrangement. In the car, he's basically like, look, the director says that you should get from... Um, Get home, um, a speedy recover me, and here is the revised script. Y'all remember when Joey had a revised script on uh, Friends? Okay, he was axed off the show. I was like, oh no, I wonder what happened. After he gets to the revised script, he on the treadmill, boom, trying to walk. Toby comes in and was like, yo, what are you doing? You need to get off this treadmill. And he's like, look, no, I need to get this off because I can't do this again. I won't have this stupid knee ruin my life again. <laughs> And I think Toby had the great answer because it's like everybody who watches um, This Is Us. Again, uh, what, do you, what is happening? What happened in this stupid family that no one is telling us yet? Sorry guys, my camera died. So anyway, um, so then Kevin's like, look, I used to play football. Um, and I was so good at football. And I was so good at football that my dad would come every day to the games and he would... You know, record them, send it out. I was getting scouted. People loved me. People wanted to be with me. But then my knee went out. After my knee went out, then I decided I wanted to do um, acting. And I was so good at acting that I feel the same rush that I do acting that I did when I play football. And I can't have them, okay, taking my scenes away because they just did a rewrite. And I don't want anybody else being able to say... I got you, Jimmy. Now, was it just me? <laughs> but I was thinking, all this over who would get to say, I got you, Jimmy? Is this why we here? He was so pressed on who. It is not, I mean, maybe it's going to be that hasta la vista, baby, or whatever. But I was just like, are we mad because somebody else get to say, I got you, Jimmy? <laughs> was that the name of the movie? <laughs> I just didn't understand it. It just really bothered me. But anyway, he goes from there. Now he's watching football. Somebody put in the comments, explain to me what he was doing. He had a belt around his foot. 
And he was like pulling it towards him while his knee was messed up. It didn't make sense to me, but he's watching old football games as he's doing this. And you can see in the video that his dad is like, my boy's tough. He's tough. He's good. He's tough as hell. You know, nobody's going to be able to get him. This is how we do it in the family. And I think that that gives Kevin the adrenaline rush and the assurance that he needs to now go take those pills. Y'all, he took those pills and he went back on that set and he was walking like he was never hurt. I'm really afraid. Now, I'm a millennial. So every time that I was looking at him or every time that I think about somebody with a pill overdose, I immediately go back to say by the bell. I immediately go back to say by the bell. I immediately think, I'm so excited. Y'all remember she got addicted to those pain medicines? It wasn't even pain medicine. It was, um, oh, it's the pills to keep you awake. Oh, I can't remember what it was, but she got addicted to the pills to keep you awake and she just wanted them more and more and more. You know, they don't make shows like that anymore for teens. This is probably why they all doing that purple sex and all of those other pills that they out here doing. It's hard out here. Bring back the shows like this is going to a whole nother. <laughs> y'all, what y'all thought about Kevin and the Pills? Because I was about to take y'all on a memory lane, right? And we don't need to go down there. What y'all thought about the Pills? I thought it was, uh, I don't know. Somebody was like, I wish Kevin just go away. <laughs> Kevin isn't one of my favorite characters, but damn, I didn't think it was going to be like that. Um, what do y'all think? I don't know. It was very, very interesting. So we'll see. Alright y'all, tell me what y'all thought about this episode. I didn't think it was that sad. I didn't really cry much. I got a little misty, but um, I didn't really cry much. But it was really, really a good episode. Um, tell me what y'all thought in the comments. Remember, this is a place where we don't have to really rehash everything in the episode. But we it is a chance to debrief. You know, this is us as a very, very happy show. And I want us to be able to get those feelings out um, so that we can have a calm day in the morning or for the rest of the week. Tell me what y'all thought about the episode. If y'all want to know about more me or anything that I'm doing, make sure you follow my Facebook page, The Busy Blue. You can also follow me on social media websites, Busy Blue, no space, no E. I'm on Instagram and on Twitter. I have so much stuff to do, you guys, so I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to do a video about everything that's going on surfacely. Um, so let me get back to that stuff. All right, bees, stay busy on. Till next time.